Colonel Percy Fawcett embodied the image of a swashbuckling hero with his distinctive Stetson hat, well-groomed beard, and steely blue eyes. His military history included service in World War I, a top-secret assignment as a spy in Morocco, and a spell as a British artilleryman in Sri Lanka. The majority of his notoriety came from his six mapping journeys into the Amazon's wilderness, which he referred to as the last great blank space in the world. Fawcett had started exploring hitherto unexplored regions in Bolivia and Brazil in 1906, where he encountered hostile Aboriginal tribes and avoided toxic pit vipers. His actions garnered international attention and earned him a coveted medal from the Royal Geographical Society. They even served as inspiration for Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's 1912 book, The Lost World. Fawcett became known as one of the greatest explorers of all time as a result of his travels, which also helped him to formulate the hypothesis that an advanced and antiquated metropolis existed in the Amazon. His encounters with Aboriginal people had persuaded him that vast populations could flourish in the harsh rainforest climate, and he had come across mentions of advanced communities in the chronicles of the European conquistadors. A Portuguese treasure hunter's description of a stone jungle metropolis of immense size and grandeur from 1753 particularly captured his attention. Over time, Fawcett developed a growing obsession with finding his version of El Dorado in the modern era, which he named the City of Z. In the early 1920s, he conducted two searches for it, but each time bad weather, sickness and weariness forced him to leave the bush. Before he was able to obtain funds for a third expedition, he had to campaign for over three years. The 57-year-old adventurer was adamant that Z was hiding somewhere in Brazil's uncharted Mato Grosso region, even in the face of criticism that he was embarking on a foolish quest. There were plenty of willing participants for Fawcett's last voyage, but he declined offers from renowned explorer T. E. Lawrence, dupped the Lawrence of Arabia, preferring to bring his 21-year-old son Jack Instead, who shared his almost fanatical devotion to the Z hypothesis, Rally Rimel, Jack's best buddy, completed the group. In January of 1925, the three embarked from New Jersey, loaded up with essentials such as machetes, tinned food, and mosquito netting. Fawcett promised reporters, we're coming back and we're bringing what we're looking for. After setting sail for Rio de Janeiro, the Fawcett expedition hiked inland to the isolated Amazonian outpost of Cuiabá, where they recruited two local guides and bought pack animals. They made their first foray into the bush on April 20th, 1925. In front of them was an oppressively hot tangle of thick underbrush, rivers rife with piranhas, and uncharted land inhabited by savage Aboriginal tribes. But in the first few weeks of the voyage, the insects turned out to be the biggest danger. Not only was travel painful due to blood-sucking gnats and swarming mosquitoes, but tick bites caused Rimmel's foot to swell badly. Unfazed, Fawcett maintained an arduous daily pace of 10 to 15 kilometers per day. He overtook his young friends on one leg, getting so far ahead that he had to spend the night by himself while camping. The squad arrived at Dead Horse Camp on May 29th, the location where Fawcett had been compelled to shoot his exhausted horse and give up on Z during one of his previous searches. After unloading their gear, they dispatched their guides back to Cuiabar from there. Fawcett sent the last dispatches from the expedition to the Indians before they departed. A letter to his wife Nina was one of them. It said, Jack is well, in good shape, and getting stronger every day. You don't need to be afraid of failing. With that, the three of them ventured into the jungle by themselves. Although Fawcett had warned that once his expedition ventured into uncharted area, it would become dark, and by 1927, over two years had gone by without any news from the colonel or his young friends. Newspapers, who had praised Fawcett for being unaffected by the dangers of the jungle, started to speculate that he was dead, and witnesses appeared with confusing reports on his whereabouts. Fawcett was being held captive by Indians, according to one man who said he had gone native and was living in the jungle. One more person insisted that he was now the leader of a cannibal tribe near the Shingu River. 
George Miller Diot of the Royal Geographical Society set out on the initial search for Fawcett and his group in 1928. After emerging from the bush, he was certain that the expedition had failed, but he could find no bodies and had no concrete proof. A defiant Nina Fawcett told reporters, there is consequently still no proof that the three explorers are dead. Until her death, she never gave up hope of her son and husband's return. Numerous additional would-be rescues and investigators have been drawn into the Amazon by the mystery surrounding Fawcett's disappearance in the years after the diet trip. Up to 100 of them are thought to have perished in the bush, and a handful have disappeared without a trace, just like the explorers. As recently as 1996, wealthy businessman James Lynch led a group of Fawcett hunters who were kidnapped by Amazonian Indians and held for ransom. They had to give over equipment valued at $30,000 before they could escape alive. What was the actual fate of the Fawcett expedition? Scholars have attributed its demise to a variety of factors, including malnutrition, drowning, jaguar assaults, parasite infections, and malaria. Some have even suggested that Fawcett, a long-standing mystic, deliberately disappeared to establish an occult commune in the forest. When journalist David Gran followed Fawcett's route across the Amazon in 2005, a unique clue came to light. He discovered that the Kalapalo Indians had saved the story of their encounter with the explorer in their oral tradition during a meeting with them. The Kalapalos referred to the Indians as the Fierce Indians, and the Indians said Fawcett had defied their warnings and ventured into their territory. The Kalapalos believed they had been ambushed and killed when the white guys disappeared. Though Fawcett's exact fate may never be known, evidence has emerged in recent years suggesting that his notion of a highly developed Jungle city was not entirely speculative. Many archaeologists now believe the Amazon was home to dozens of thriving settlements in the years before the advent of Europeans, as Gran notes in his book, The Lost City of Z, the remains of garden cities with intricate road systems, fortifications made of earth, and ample room for thousands of people have been discovered during excavations. Some of these locations are tucked away in the heart of Mato Grosso, the state where Percy Fawcett thought he would locate his fabled city of Z.